SOLIDWORKS 2011 has a lot of new functionality with regards to routing. The first thing we're going to look at is the routing library manager, where all libraries and uh, all our uh, have now been consolidated uh, just for piping, electrical, etc. into one area. We've also got a lot of new components that have been added into the routing component manager. And as we can see on the screen, we're just going to click on some of these couplings, flanges, etc. Okay, so next thing we're just going to look at the routing component wizard where we can see that following the easy to follow instructions we can easily add our routing and connection points onto any parts we want to add to the library. I'm just going to look at the last couple of tabs here uh, and the next one basically we're going to look at the tab scheme manager which is uh, basically to con show control of imported P and ID data. So the schema editor allows us to take the XML output from PNID files and break it down into its constituent parts so SOLIDWORKS can actually understand it. So we're just going to run through this and use the editor and add all the relevant information. I can see this has been actually been built up on our preview. So uh, what we're going to do is once we're finished with this, we're just going to cancel this. I'm just going to have a, a quick look at the other tabs. So uh, on the last one, uh, basically, it's uh, just a view of uh, our new piping database. And this, is, uh, this can be easily populated with any design library parts or external components where the PNID data does, is not included uh, within the SOLIDWORKS file. So a great little uh, tool just to control all your external references for routing, piping, etc. Okay, so let's actually uh, have a look at some of our new functionality within the piping itself. So basically most routes uh, are generated by dragging and dropping a component on, usually a flange or something like that. And what we're going to do here is no different and you'll notice as we browse for our particular flange we now get the ability to auto size on the drag and drop so we're just going to drop this flange on and we can hover over the corresponding area and you can see that does auto size as required and we're just going to drop this on here And you'll notice as well, we've now got the ability to add well gap. So we're just going to add a, a value in here to add a well gap. We'll just put five millimeters in here and just accept that. So back to our route. And we're now going to uh, complete the route by dropping on a flange onto our other location. So I'm just going to zoom in. Again, drop a flange on. And we're now going to finish this off by using the auto route. Now SOLIDWORKS does check the valid validity of the route. And what we'll need to do here is actually just drop on a reducer. So we're just going to drop a reducer onto our tube or onto our pipe. And OK on that. I'll say okay so we'll just go ahead and we'll accept this and what we're going to do is we're just going to zoom in and you can see the well gap that we stated before at five millimeters and if we do want to change this all we need to do is actually check click on our route and we can actually change that value as required Okay, there we have it. Okay, so we're going to look at some other areas, uh, and there's been vast improvements uh, that have been added into routing when using the PNID import capability. So what we've done is we've loaded our PNID file in, and after loading our XML file, what we're going to get is a real-time report. Uh, listing all the routes that have been completed uh, but also all the information with regards to the port numbers 
and pipe tags. So you can see on the report here, just going to expand on here just to show that information. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually process the mix one pipe route. And you can see by doing this, it automatically adds uh, the correct flanges to uh, the correct ports. And once accepted, it actually adds the guidelines on that we can right click on here and we can actually convert these guidelines. Now by right mouse clicking, uh, we can actually see the different routes our pipe can take. So what we're going to do is using the uh, 3D sketch capabilities, we can actually go in here and we can actually change the orientation and the position of this particular route. We can now add dimensions between the actual pipe and any other components. And what's nice about this is that we don't have to worry about coverings, etc., because the dimension is always taken from the outside of the actual pipe itself. So we're just going to accept this and then carry on with the rest of our route. And we're now going to uh, process our next tubing or our next route. And again, as before, we're just going to process this uh, pipe. And one of the things that we can see is that it does require extra fittings. Now, it's not possible to add these fittings until the pipe is actually in place. So another dialog box opens uh, called the filtered components, which shows all the pipe sections uh, without the fittings. So we're going to start off with converting the guidelines. Now, what we're going to do is just give this a little bit of a helping hand here, because although we'd like to, to accept that, we do actually want to reposition it. So we're just going to cancel that for a second. And we're in our 3D sketching capabilities. And we're just going to add a line in here and we're just going to drop this down and just roughly position it okay and we'll drop this about here under our platform and we'll go back to our filtered connections we'll just accept that and then we'll convert the guidelines as before Okay, choose the position that we're after that we're happy with and we'll just move that to a position uh, that's required okay so back into our process pipe again and obviously now with pipes been added we can now start adding our fittings so we're just going to add this T in here and you'll see the the green or the green pipe highlights to show the actual pipe it needs to be placed on again as before, we're just going to convert the guidelines and then choose our orientation that we're happy with. Position this about, either by dimensions or just by dragging. And then back into our filtered connections, we're going to drop on the rest of the fitting. So again, another T on there. And I'm going to place another T. You can see the pipe highlighting to show us a placement area. And then we want to drop one underneath the platform there as well. Okay, so once our fittings have been added, we might actually want to rotate these. So what we can do is we can actually uh, go to the fitting itself. Okay, and what we want to do is we can actually rotate this with the triad. So the familiar triad will pop up and we can rotate our fitting uh, to a position or a preferable position. Again, same with this T down here. Now, although it's been placed, we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to rotate it. And even though the pipe has actually been placed, you can see it breaks it, but it does actually show the guidelines. So what we're going to do is uh, just uh, make a few modifications so we're going to remove these sketch entities you can see so we're just going to highlight them and we'll delete these um, we're just going to merge these two points together now okay and just place it as required Another thing we want to look at now is this uh, this fitting down here. 
right, it's underneath the platform so it's awkward to access so this time instead of rotating we're actually going to move it so we're going to move it with the triad you can see we're going to lift it above and again we've got our guidelines that again we can just right click on there and we can convert guidelines and using all our familiar 3d sketching functionality we can just drag these about as required okay convert the guidelines just to finish this off and just position it as required again as well with dimensions or relations etc and we've now completed our route hopefully you can see some great new additions to our piping and routing for 2011